on It's Supernatural. A man is shot at point-blank range repeatedly, yet never hit. After his life is miraculously spared, he receives a supernatural visitation. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Todd White, was shot point blank in a drug deal that went bad. Point blank, not one bullet touched him. It was almost as if there was an invisible shield. And then he heard a voice. But Todd, uh, you were uh, raised in a, in a, in a home yeah. where uh, you had to be sent out to a uh, boys' school. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that. I was uh, at like 11 and a half. I, my parents had been divorced and I was a rowdy child and my mom worked for a pizza shop, one of the three jobs and, and uh, a guy was a mason in there. So I grew up in the Masonic homes in Elizabethtown. Is that where you started on drugs? Uh, I started it, yep, and about six months after that I started using it at 12 years old. Started getting high and then it just escalated. And you uh, went into the Marines, and you went AWOL, and you yep. ended up in prison. I mean, yeah. you, you had a big mess going on. I sure did. <laughs> and then you get married. Yeah. Or, or you didn't get married, but you had a child. Well, I did. We, we actually, uh, uh, I got extradited, kicked out of the Marine Corps, bad conduct discharge, the whole nine yards. And I met a girl on a blind date at a bar one night, and uh, I kind of tricked her into having a child. We actually had a child together, and we lived together for, for nine years. And I was an atheist and a, and a drug dealer, a drug addict. And How long were you a drug addict? Uh, 22 years. Mm. 22 and years. So, so there was, uh, you went looking for drugs one night. Tell right. me about that. Yeah, I actually, I went out, I had actually asked Jesus to come into my heart about four and a half months prior, but I never got into the Word. I never understood that that was what was going to transform me in relationship with Jesus. I went out one night to get to get some crack, and I picked up this kid on a back street. I'd lost my girlfriend and my, my daughter who had chased me out in town. I picked him up, and once I had the drugs in my hand, I told him that I was a police officer, and I started to read him his rights. And he started to freak out. You this, were conning him because you didn't it. have money for the drugs. That's bro. it. And uh, I pulled over. I told him to step out of the car and put his hands on the hood. And when he stepped out of the car to put his hands on the hood, I hit the gas, and he unloaded a 9 millimeter at me. I don't know how many bullets it was, but I know it was enough that I shouldn't be here right now. And I heard an audible voice say to me, I took those bullets for you. Are you ready to live for me yet? And I went and actually did the drugs. I didn't get high that night. And it was so weird because they were very real drugs. I had smoked crack and I knew what they were. I went home. My girlfriend was at home and she hated me. She was ready for me to leave. She was an atheist also. And she, I'd never represented Christ in, in me saying that I knew Jesus. So she said, you need to leave. I said, I actually do need to leave. And that night I left the house. Three days later, I went to a place called Teen Challenge. I was in Teen Challenge for a two month period of time. I had a radical encounter with Jesus three nights in a row. And he told me to go home. And when I you, came you, you know, we can't speed this up. It's just so amazing. When you first went into Teen Challenge, you started having uh, bad dreams. Horrible. And then you, you met a, a street man. Yep. Tell me about that. I, uh, I had horrible nightmares every night. Every night when I go to sleep, I'd be attacked. It was the only place where Satan had access to my soul which is your mind, will, and emotions. And he had access to that. At night when I'd go to sleep, I'd have these horrible nightmares. So every night my roommates in Teen Challenge were petrified of, of me because I'd run around the room screaming and yelling and hollering and hiding underneath the bed. It was just horrible. So one day I'm across the street at Teen Challenge in, in Harrisburg at the induction center and I had my guitar. I didn't know how to play, but I was just strumming the strings. A homeless man came up pushing a shopping cart 
<clears throat> and I looked, he had army fatigues on there like floods. He had a swim he had a swim goggles on his head, sneakers on. He's pushing the shopping cart. A I real him, character. A real character. Uh, the people that we're actually supposed to love and not just walk past. And I looked at him and I said, man, do you know how much Jesus loves you? And he pulled his shopping cart over and he said, I do. Do you know how much he loves you? So he started to talk to me and he told me that I had a demon. And he didn't know me, he didn't know where I was from. And, and he sat there and he talked to me and I didn't get upset. The guy that I was with from Teen Challenge, the, the other man that was in the program, he actually walked across the street mad because he told him he had a demon and he didn't want to hear that. But this guy knew something about me that there's no way he knew. And I didn't understand what words of knowledge were or anything like that. I'm brand new, have no idea. So he starts to preach the gospel to me like I've never heard. And I said to him, I said, man, why are you out here? Why aren't you preaching somewhere? And he said, 20 years ago, the Lord told me to pick up my cross and follow him. And I've been pushing this shopping cart. It was full of Bibles across the nation from mission to mission, talking to anybody who would listen. And he said, we're going to pray. And this thing's not touching you. This thing's leaving you. So he prayed and I didn't feel anything. I went back in. They kind of made fun of me because I was talking to the homeless guy out across the street. But when I turned around, he wasn't there. And I had no idea where he went. All I know is that I went back in there. My life seemed to be the same. But I went in there and went through my day. That night I had a dream that I was in a valley. And in a valley with a broad bottom to it with steep sides. And I went and it started shaking in my dream. And I thought these demons were coming to chase me again. And instead of them coming to chase me, I heard a voice say, Behold, I'm never, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm always with you. And immediately I woke up. And I went into the prayer room that I had programmed myself because I had made the commitment to go into this place and if there was really a God I was going to find him so I had to leave everything so I was in there and I'd go into the prayer room every day and the Bible was kind of hidden I, I didn't understand it I had ADHD my whole life so I'd never read a book the Bible's the first book that I can understand and it just so happens to be the one that's most important for me to understand and I opened up to Psalm 23 and I saw though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil and I woke up immediately, or I came out of the, this thing that I was in when I was in the prayer room. And I'm like, that's God. This was God talking to me. When I mean I woke up, I was like, I got lost in that six of scripture just for a second. And I went through my day. I didn't say anything to anybody. The same dream, the second night, the same valley. And it was the third night. The third what night. What did God tell you? When it got, it got so amazing because there was a light that went from behind me the whole way down this valley. And there was a voice that came from behind me and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, do not fear, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm always with you. This addiction will never touch you again. And I woke up, he told me to go home. I actually said, go home. But you hadn't completed the Teen no, Challenge program. I was only program. there for two months because it's never the program that changes you, it's Christ in the program. I know, but they don't yeah. let you go after no, two months. they were actually, you. the thing about Teen Challenge is you have access to leave, it's an open door. But once you say you're gonna leave, you have to leave. But, but so, so you leave, you go back to your girlfriend and your daughter, yep. uh, and she, yeah. she hates your guts. Right, but she had, she had started to come to Christ before I was in Teen Challenge, but when I was in there, she had started to give herself fully to believing that God could transform me. So I come home and we got married four days later in the middle of a church service. We just did it right in between. Oh, God's so amazing. Okay, so that was about four and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, what kind of marriage do you have now? I have the most incredible wife and the most incredible marriage where we've never been closer. And my wife is amazing. And I love her because in the Bible it says to love your wife like Christ loved the church. And that's an unconditional love. What about your daughter that never knew a father outside of a drug addict? Yeah, she, God has by his grace and amazing mercy has allowed my daughter to never look back, but to only look forward. And any time we look back is to only look at it as a part, not, never apart from the blood of Jesus and the testimony of what he's done. So now she knows that her dad always keeps his word. He never lies and he always follows through with everything. And that God has completely transformed not just her daddy, but her life, her mommy's life. Now we have also Zoe, who is my littlest one. She's going to be three in June. All of our lives, Zoe's out there with me. Destiny's out there with me. And when we go into Walmart, we pray for people. And Zoe prays, Owie, be gone. In Jesus' name. Todd, do you know I, I, it just dawned on me when that homeless man who disappeared, I think he could have been an angel, 
I believe somehow you received an impartation. He has an impartation of love that is so amazing, of miracles, of words of knowledge. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Todd White, and I love it. Todd received such an impartation. I mean, you lived for the devil for all those years as a drug addict, and you really live for God now. I mean, not, not this uh, facade that's called religion or right. called Christianity. I mean, reality. You go out on the streets because you love people. I want you to see Todd out on the streets in action. You're having a hard time getting this, like you're like, I see your head going, what? <laughs> It'll be good, man. It'll be real good. Okay, let me see your hand. Back, I command you right now, in Jesus' name, let him go. Every bit of pain, let him go. Every muscle, every tendon. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Every disc right now, let him go. Man, I'm hearing this. You get back pain all the time. You get a constant. It's a yeah. constant. Yeah. Let me see your feet. Let's throw in your back out. Wait. The left one, right? It's at least an inch short, right? Because I broke it. You broke it and they yeah. put it back together and they didn't yeah. put all the pieces back. Yeah. Daddy, what? thank you. In Jesus' name. Left leg, I command you grow. You right now, that? in Jesus' name. <laughs> that is amazing, and dude. Now check the back. Yeah, check your back. Stand check up and back. check your back. It's done. How'd you do that? Oh, it's done. Here's Jesus what I did. did I just I just prayed in Jesus' name and Jesus healed him right now. Yeah, cartilage, I command you be restored in Jesus' name, right now. Move your ankle. Stomp on it. Stomp on it. Oh, it's going to die, bro. Yeah, come on. Hey. Hey. This is that good, man? Hey, in Jesus' name, Lord, you're amazing. We just love you and thank you. You're going to feel warmth go in your chest right now. Jesus, thank you. Jesus' name. You feel that? It's like a real heat in your chest right now. <laughs> Do you have something that like is a nag? In my eye. What's wrong with it? I got shot. You got shot in the eye? <laughs> yes. Is Long it blind? Story. Almost. No way. Dude. Yeah, like 50, like 50%. 50% blind? Yes. So you would know if that thing opened up? Oh yeah. Come on, man. This will be good. We're going to pray for your eye. Please do. It's your right eye? My right eye, it's my okay. right eye. How'd you know that? I didn't tell you that, by the I way. I know, just hold on. Just say, say Jesus. Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. For a brand new eye. For a brand new eye. I, we command you see. I will command you see. Right now. Right now. 100%. 100%. I open. I open. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Significantly better. Yeah. It really is. It's gonna be 100%. Let's pray again. Okay. We've had 50%. We've had 50%. We're at 80%. We're at 80%. And we're thanking you for a finished job. And we're thanking you for a finished job. I open. I open. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Yeah. Open it. Much better. What's up, dude? What are it you really seeing? It really is. What are you seeing? I'm seeing almost full vision right now. Right on, dude. Okay, yeah. so it's not completely full yet. No, not yet. Okay, come on, man. One more time. Man, dude. Open. Open. Right now. Right now. Full vision. Full vision. Open it up. You kidding me? Come on, dude. You kidding me right now? No, dude. It's your eye. What do you see? It's 100%. Man. It really is. I guarantee it. It is. And it's 100% right now. It really is. What do you think of that? It's unbelievable. That's amazing. Dude. It really is. Todd, that is so wonderful. But that is normal. Does this happen often to you? Every day. Tell me about that man in the wheelchair that had the rods just briefly. Oh, okay. I was down uh, at VCU. I was down at a church down in Richmond. And uh, I was getting ready to, I just come to the church. It was my, my first day. I had the lapel mic on. I'm getting ready to preach and share whatever God's putting on my heart. And the pastor's getting ready to hand me the mic and say, it's okay, here's Todd. And I heard a voice in my heart, not audibly, a thought run out of the church now. So I ran out of the church. I just ran. 
And the people were like, okay, the guy's leaving. What's going on? I go down to the corner and I see a man coming across the street and the man's in a wheelchair. So he comes across the street and I said to him, I said, hey buddy, how are you? And he said, oh, I'm okay. He said, what do you want? I said, I don't want anything. I just see that you're in a wheelchair. Why are you in it? He said, well, like 30 years ago, back in 1976, so it'd be longer than that, I, f I fell off a bridge and I shattered my leg and actually really hurt myself. So there's two steel rods going from my thigh to my shin bone on each side of his knee so it, it holds the leg in. And now his knee has gotten solid with calcium the whole way through because he hasn't bent his leg. So I said, man, I said, God can heal your knee. He said, well, I don't believe that. I said, well, I, I'm not interested in whether you believe it or not. I'm not trying to convince you right now. I look, uh, let me pray for your knee. He goes, well, I broke my ribs a couple days ago. I just fell. My ribs are broken and I'm in severe pain. I said, well, I need to pray for your ribs then, okay? Don't you touch my ribs, he said. And I reached in and I put my hand on his ribs. And I said, in Jesus' name, ribs, I command you be healed right now. And all of a sudden, he just looked at me and his eyes got big. I said, move your ribs around. He goes, all the pain's gone. And the ribs came together right there. Mm. So now the man is a little less combative. And I said to him, he's a homeless man. And I said to him, I said, man, I said, come on, you gotta let me pray for your knee. He said, well, I, I, he goes, it, it ain't gonna change anything. And now he's less fighting it. But he's like, it's, it's got almost like a question. It ain't gonna change anything like that <laughs> because now his ribs are healed. So he prayed for his knees and, and prayed and my lapel mic is on in the church. So now the church, the people are starting to come out. They're all the, hearing They're everything. starting to come out. Yeah, it's so good. And so I said, come on, in Jesus' name, we prayed and nothing happened. And he said, he just looked at me like I told you. And we prayed again and all of a sudden he bent it just a tiny bit. And then the third and fourth time we just kept hitting it and hitting it. And it's the word is a hammer and you pound that thing and keep on hitting it and keep on hitting it. So all of a sudden his knee bent and he freaked out. He goes, I ain't never seen it do that before. It can't bend, it has metal in there. So he stands up, gets out of the wheelchair and his back's bent over, his back's like that. And I said to him, I said, what's wrong with your back? He said, I broke my back when the fall. So now his knee, but his knee's moving. So we just, just prayed for his back and he stood straight up right there on the street, mm. just right there in the corner. And then he bent over and touched the ground with his hands and walked. Do you realize what a miracle that is? It's amazing. Everything you've told me, but especially the metal rods. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how does he bend his knees with metal rods? That's it. We have seen people where we've prayed for people and they've gone back to the doctors and the metal's gone. It's not there anymore. And that's a real good way to get to a doctor's heart because they put it in. You know, one of the things that you taught me, Todd taught me something that is so phenomenal. When I pray for the sick people, sometimes I have a cop out and I say to myself, oh, they just don't have any faith. But what yeah. did you teach me? Well. It says these signs follow those that believe. It doesn't say these signs follow those being prayed for. So the believing believer, the one that's praying, is responsible fully and completely for that person being healed. I can't afford to depend on their faith. How are we going to touch the witches? How are we going to touch Muslims? How are we going to touch Hindus? See, I don't go up and run from witches or run from Muslims. I love them. I want to hug a witch because I know that God Your will touch faith, them. You made a statement. He said, my faith trumps their unbelief. That's I true. love it. Don't That's go it. away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Todd White. And Todd, I am overwhelmed with your chutzpah. Chutzpah is a Hebrew word. It means nerve. But you had nerve for the devil. Now you have nerve for God. Let's take a look at it right okay. now. Since I go to school for clinical laboratory sciences, I'm wow. pretty much hippie. I believe in evolution, right. but I believe God started evolution for a reason. Right. Because there has to be scientific evidence for everything. Which one of your backs is messed up? Backs? Yeah, Mine. back. It's your back. Do you have scoliosis? No. What do you have? Nothing. You have something going I, on? I don't know. I but a lot of pain. Now I want you guys to come and watch because this would be so good. You want to stand right up here. Okay, here's what you sit there. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to give me your sh your feet. You want me to nope, take off? you don't have to take off. Nope. Okay, okay. Here's what I know. I know what I hear in my heart, and I'm hearing that one of your legs is shorter than the other the by a significant one. amount, and you already knew that, right? Yeah. Okay, so here I'm going to give you something to figure out scientifically because this will blow you away because because you're into science and, and I think it's amazing that God's given you such an amazing mind. Mm -hmm. It's good. But right now God's going to grow your leg out because I'm going to command your bones to grow. 
and your ligaments and your tendons and your back's going to be healed and your legs going to grow out. So that right there is amazing and he loves you. Okay? okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Jesus, thank you. Father, I thank you for growing out her left leg right now. Bones, ligaments, tendons, in Jesus' name. Get out here right now. There it goes. <laughs> now you do me a favor. You scientifically explain what just happened. No. You can't. No. Because it's a miracle. <laughs> Jesus loves you so much. Thank you. Which one of your necks is giving you trouble? Your neck? Yeah, right oh now. My God, that is so <laughs> no, watch, but watch this. So now watch. I want you to scientifically explain this right now. It's on your it's on this side. Come here. God's gonna completely heal your neck because he's just he loves he loves the mind. He does. It's just that sometimes our mind tries to get in the way of our heart. Because our heart can take its places our brain can never fit. Right? Neck, I command you be healed because Jesus is Lord and he loves you so much. Come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Move your neck. <laughs> and nobody has a problem with one of their wrists right now. Uh, I do when I, I do chair stuff, but not right now. You do. Is it both of them or is it just this one? Yeah. Daddy, thank you in Jesus' name. Wrist, I command you be healed right now. Carpal tunnel, I curse you and command you let her go. In Jesus' name. I wish you did that too. Move your wrist. No, I'm hearing wrist. God will heal you right now. Come here. Daddy, thank you so much that you love her so much, God, that you just bless her, God, because she's an amazing daughter. Father, I thank you that right now her heart is so an outgrow in her brain because you love her so much, God. Thank you for your daughter. Jesus, thank you for your daughter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's called a miracle. Come on. It's the real deal. Todd, your faith is so outrageous. <laughs> it's so normal. I want everyone to walk in this kind of faith. This is normal for you. When you listen to his special CD, I believe that his faith will just jump on you. In fact, Todd, I'm going to put a demand on your gift right now. You have such a marvelous gift. I want you to look into the camera and I'm going to surprise you. I want you to sing whatever God puts in your heart. And as Todd sings, you are going to be delivered and healed. You believe God right now. Todd, sing. Amen. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your sons and daughters. Oh, Jesus, come into their life right now. And we give you glory. And we give you praise, holy. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, Lord God. We crush cancer in Jesus' name. We command it to leave the bodies right now. Father, I thank you for every joint, for every bit of arthritis. We curse it and command it. Let go right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for all mental disorders right now. For bipolar, for schizophrenia, I command you, let them go right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for amazing breakthrough in every area of mental incapacity to make it the capacity of the kingdom of God in Jesus name. And I pray that you be normal. Todd is normal in Jesus name.